Hey, good morning, Cornerstone. Everybody's smelling chilly this morning. So if you're in the foyer, come on in and uh, let's get started here today. Oh, God bless you. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. Sunday morning. We thank you uh, for, for your people who are gathered here together to shout your praise and, and to tally your love for us. Father, we pray that your spirit would be set free in our midst, that we'd hear from you, Lord, that we would be drawn close to you, ever closer and closer to you each day. Father, speak loud and clear to us today, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Welcome to the Cornerstone. It's a good day to be in church, chilly after church. Oh, the Lord is good things all the time. Oh, 
sing this with me. Lift up his name within the sanctuary. Lift up his name among the people who are sanctuary lift up his name among the people who are gathered here to sing his praise who are gathered here to sing his praise holy is our God holy is your chili you're smelling right now that smells so good that's mine and it's gonna and it's gonna win okay just keep that in mind you vote for mine later on boys and girls where are you at it's good to see you in church today we're gonna send you off to power kids uh, just just on the other side of the chili all right so Courtney will be back there waiting for you and we'll see you at the end of the service yeah don't, <laughs> don't stop for samples but if you do just put your vote in for pastor Mike's chili it's a good day to be in church. Good day to be here. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All of my days I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I pray. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you 
have been so, so good With every breath that I am made Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God I love your the Lord. Aren't you glad you serve Jesus today? That he's reigning and living, live and well. Almighty God, we lift you up. Praise your name, Lord. You are worthy of it all. Oh, sing this with me. You are worthy. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things, you deserve the glory.
to you are all things you deserve the glory time with me.
Almighty God, we praise you today. Hallelujah, Lord. There's no one like you, Jesus. Oh, praise you, Lord. Mighty God. These, these last couple songs we're singing, these are the, the same songs that, that the Bible shows the, the angels and the saints are singing in heaven all, all the time, just praising God, giving him the glory. The, the bridge of the last song talked about incense going up. That's envisioning our prayers going up to heaven. That they're, they're not bouncing off the ceiling. They're not getting stuck somewhere here, but they're, they're making it. And God is hearing them and responding. I wonder this morning if, if you have a need, you have a burden in your heart, something that you're, you're praying for and hoping for, and God, I don't know what I'm going to do if you don't come through for me. Uh, we've had some just fantastic answers to prayer in the last week. God doing good things in people's lives, and we rejoice with you. And, and I'll tell you, I'm encouraged because I know that, that as we pray for you and God does good things, that, that it'll happen again and again and again as God's kingdom breaks forward. So let's take a minute. Let's, let's go to the Lord. Let's trust him to hear all of our prayers and to respond mightily. Oh, mighty God, could you muster up every little bit of faith you've got? Ask the Lord for a little bit more. God, I, I just want you to know that we love everything about you. God, I love the way that you've saved us and called us out of darkness and into light. I thank you, God, that we don't live our lives in darkness and frustration, but our lives are characterized by joy and blessing and glory and honor. Lord, you, you have, have set your glory above us in the heavens, the Bible says, but Lord, you also reveal your, your glory to us and you take up residence in us. Father, let us be encouraged today to know that the Lord is near. You're not far off in a distant galaxy, but, but you're here with us all the time. Father, each one of us, we carry something that we worry and we wonder about. And even if, even if we're not praying people, we, we carry this load around. And God, today we, we offer them to you. All of our fears, all of our struggles, everything. God, there's folks here that are a burden for their family members, people in their neighborhood and their workplaces people that just need a healing in their body. And we pray, Lord, that you would do mighty things in our midst and in our lives. Give us a good story to tell of your goodness and your greatness, Lord. Oh, we praise you, Jesus. All things are possible through Christ who gives us strength. We bless you and honor you today. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Ah, before you're seated today, just ah, look at somebody and say, something smells good. I think that's the pastor's chili. Can't wait to try it. Hey, God bless you. You may be seated. <laughs> Right. Well, welcome again. Welcome again. I think there were six people in the church service when I welcomed you the first time, but the rest of you, you came in eventually. It's good to be with you uh, in God's house today. If you are our guest here today, we welcome you in the name of the Lord, and we trust that you feel just at home in God's presence, and well, in, in our presence too, but, but God's uh, most of all. Maybe uh, you're with us today because your, your teenager goes to youth here every Friday night, and you heard that there's chilly after church today. And we welcome you, and we're thrilled to have you uh, here with us. If I have not met you yet before the service, stick around. Make sure you find me or I find you, and I'd love to uh, meet you and put a, put a face to your name, find out uh, just who you are. A couple of announcements before we get going. Uh, uh, Easter is still happening. It's still moving. This is considered on the church calendar the third week of Easter because Jesus is still alive. He's still resurrected. There's no grave I could hold him, so we're still thinking about that. Uh, today, we've got some folks here to receive our offering. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, 
us. Gene and Bruce, fantastic. Uh, God bless you as you give today uh, uh, your tithes and, and your offerings. Uh, we appreciate that so much. Wednesday night is Friends at the Corner. You know that. A fantastic time each week. Friday night uh, is... Oh. You know what? There might not be youth this Friday because I know there's a youth rally on Saturday. It'll be in the email. Just just check it out uh, in the email. April 20th, coming up fast. That's this Saturday. Young at heart. You guys are going for pancakes and maple syrup up north to Wheeler's Sugar Shack. Ah, oh, that's going to be a good day. Uh, young adults are coming up on the 27th. Are you still going bowling, Steve? In Elgin. Uh, fantastic. I didn't even know they had bowling lanes in Elgin, but you learn something new every day. But you got to be a young adult. you got to be a young adult to, to get into that one. Uh, and then Women Connect is coming up as well on the 27th. Lots of stuff happening. Stay tuned. Today, we've got chili after church, and we are we got lots of room. If, if you're here today, we want you to stay. Don't think that you have to go home because the food is not going to be as good at home as it will be here. I guarantee you. Uh, I've, I've been poking around. I saw some desserts out there. I saw, yeah, some pretty, it'll be a good day. It'll be a good day. So stick around. This is a, a fundraiser for our youth. Uh, they're looking to go uh, to youth convention in Ottawa next month. And uh, so I trust. I trust you brought, you stopped at the bank machine, you got some cash, okay? Because there's some silent auction things out there, uh, some really good looking items. Uh, there's also... Uh, um, just, just, just ways for you to give and support our, our teenagers as uh, we encourage the work of the Lord in them. If, if you didn't bring cash, I know, I know, cash is society. Uh, you can do e-transfer, and Courtney's got forms there, and you can just designate it when you send your e-transfer in. I think that's all the announcements I have. I think we can look into the Word of God uh, this morning. I know I'm fighting stiff competition this morning. It's going to be difficult. I know you're thinking about lunch. It's bad enough on any other Sunday when your lunch is like down at the gas station chicken or up in Rapid Valley. But today the lunch is on the other side of those doors. So I know I have to do my best to keep you tuned in. So maybe we should pray and ask God to help us as well. Uh, so Father, we give you thanks for another day of grace and another day of goodness. Father, oh Jesus, help me to be interesting this this morning. Help the Word of God to be so compelling, even more than that fantastic chili. We thank you for our teenagers and the work of the Lord that's happening in them. And I pray, Lord, that as we have lunch together, we just be uh, just in awe of how you're bringing them along and growing them in you and teaching them, Lord, how to be uh, uh, like the men and women that you dream them to be. So, Lord, today, as we look into your Word, keep us focused. Oh, big prayers there in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, this is, yeah, it's still Easter. This is the third Sunday of Easter. Easter Resurrection Sunday is day one. Last week, remember I told you last week, it's the biggest day on the church calendar. Uh, that guy didn't come back. He didn't believe me that, you know, the week after Easter is the biggest day. But nonetheless, it doesn't matter. You're here today for the third week. We're still celebrating that Jesus is alive and well. Uh, no grave could, could hold him. Uh, the tomb wasn't strong enough to keep him underground. Uh, but Jesus is is alive and well, and our lives completely change as a result of that. In, in the book of Acts, right at the very start, uh, we see just what Jesus was doing for like the period in time between the, the resurrection and, and the ascension when he went up uh, to his, his father. And, and this is what it says. Uh, Acts is writing to a guy, uh, Luke, who wrote the book of Acts. He's writing to a friend of his, Theophilus. And he says, in my former book, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the disciples he had chosen. Okay. After his suffering, after Easter... He showed himself to those men. We talked about that last week. Remember, he got in through a locked door. Yeah, locked doors don't stop Jesus either. He showed himself to those men, and he gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days, and he spoke about the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of, of God. Of all the things he could have talked about, he wasn't saying you need to do these five things until I come back. You know, you need to be a really good person. If you're a dad, become the best dad that you can be. Become the best mom that you can be. Become the best high school student that you can be. That wasn't what Jesus was concerned with. Jesus wanted to tell his disciples who would tell others who would eventually tell us about the kingdom of God. 
that there's this thing that Jesus has been planning and God has been planning for a very long time that is going to fundamentally change everything about what we're used to. This kingdom of God. Now, I, I think one of the reasons why Jesus had to talk about the kingdom was because nobody really understood it when he was here. The disciples, they, they didn't quite get it over and over. We see that through the, the scriptures that they didn't quite get it as most of us don't get it as well. So Jesus said, I got to devote some time. I got 40 days left until the ascension, and I'm going to spend some time talking about the kingdom of God. So the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about the kingdom of God and the way that God is, is like, eventually when Jesus comes back, the kingdom will be fully realized and, like, it'll be here. Like, the, that's just the way it's going to be and, and, like, the whole world will change and everything will be made brand new. But until then, because we're, we're still here, right? We're, we're still here. <laughs> Knock on wood. If you know, your spouse is falling asleep, just give him an elbow. You're still here. Stop dreaming. Let's get back at it. We prayed about it. The pastor prayed, Okay. So we're still here, so what do we do until the kingdom of God is fully realized? Because it's, we get to see it in, in bits and pieces. Not, not in its totality, but we see it in, in bits and pieces. And so how do we reckon that? How do we figure that out? So if you have your Bibles, we're going to go to Matthew chapter, chapter 4. All right? So Jesus is, is just starting. This is at the very start of his ministry here on earth. He's uh, walking around, talking, encouraging people. He, oh, he, gets, oh, he gets baptized by his, his cousin John the Baptist. He gets tempted in the wilderness by, by the devil. And then it says that he begins to preach. And when Jesus heard that John had been put in prison, he went back to Galilee. And he left Nazareth, went back, and he lived in Capernaum, which is kind of like his hometown. And, and he starts seeing all these people who are, well, the Bible says it, they're living in darkness. But now, and I'm sure he's thinking about himself, but now they're starting to see the light. They're starting to get it. A little bit of light is creeping in. When, when, when your kids were, were younger, or, or maybe you've got young kids, you know, and, and you'd send them to go to bed. You know, you know, like the age when you could still send your kids to bed and, and they listen to you. And, uh, yeah, there's an age when that stops. But you can see under, like, the door of the room, you can see, like, there's a flashlight come on or, or a cell phone comes on. And you told them to put the phone away at 10 o'clock, no more phones. But you can see it, and it gives them away. And kids aren't smart enough. Sorry, kids, I know there's some of you in the service. But kids aren't smart enough to know that that light you can see it right down the hall. It gives it away. And Jesus says that everybody, it seems like everybody just seems to be living in darkness, but there is a glimmer of light. And even if there's a glimmer of light, it finds a way to light up the whole room, doesn't it? Mm, people in darkness, a little bit of light. And from that time on, it says Jesus began to preach. I don't know if he was competing with Chile after church, but he began to preach, repent because the kingdom of heaven is near. It's so close you can taste it. You can almost touch it. The kingdom of heaven is coming near. It's getting close. And then he goes out and he, he finds some disciples. But Jesus doesn't do what everybody thinks he should do. You don't pick fantastic people and you know, smart people and really good looking people. Well, they might have been good looking. The Bible doesn't say anything about their appearance. But he goes out and he gets some fishermen. And nothing against fishermen. Ralph is already staring daggers at me. Great things about fishermen. But these are not well educated fishermen. These aren't rich. They're not even good fishermen. And Jesus calls them and he says, I want you to come and follow me and I'm going to make you fishers of men. And at once they left their nets and they followed him. And going from there, they found a couple more guys, uh, the sons of Zebedee and John and James. And they left uh, their father, left the boat, and they followed Jesus. And then it says that Jesus went around. He begins healing sick people. Like, like this is giving us a glimpse of what the kingdom is like, that sickness is no longer. How, how good would that be? That sickness is no longer a part of our experience. No more, I mean, everybody seems to have had every cold this winter. We've all had colds from November to March. We all had a cold. How cool would it be that when the kingdom of God is here, there's no more sickness. And Jesus is healing everything that, that goes wrong. There's people diseased, people in, in turmoil, and Jesus is setting them free. People in severe pain, demon-possessed people, those with seizures, paralyzed people. He heals them all. And people began to follow him and check out what he was saying. And so when the crowd built up, Jesus walks up a mountain and, uh, and he sits down and he begins to teach the people uh, what he's coming to do. And what does he start with? Uh, the kingdom of God. 
Because if it's getting closer and closer, I think that maybe he's thinking, i got to tell these people so that they can recognize it, so that they can see it, so that this thing that's burning in their hearts, this desire that they have for a little more from God will be realized, and they'll know just what is happening. And he launches into, uh, it, it, it's kind of poetic, uh, but, but it's called, the we, where we call it, the Beatitudes. There's eight characteristics of kingdom people that he, he begins to launch into. The disciples, they came to him, he sat down, he began to teach them. And this is what he began to say. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Now, blessed, I want you to think like that where we don't use blessed, you know, a whole lot in, in you know, our, our day-to-day speech. But, but think fortunate or you're lucky if or my goodness, what, what, what luck. I can't believe how good you've got it that you, of all people, get to be poor in spirit. Well, that doesn't sound fantastic at all. Uh, Luke tells, tells this, this, puts a little twist on it. He says, blessed are the poor. Not just the poor in spirit, but the, the poor. If you're poor, way to go. Well, that, that's kind of weird. <laughs> that's kind of weird because you and I, we spend our entire lives trying not to be poor of any variety. We don't want that. We, we think, well, I... I feel kind of poor, and so I, and, and it's like, you know, your phone, you start thinking stuff or start talking stuff out loud, and all of a sudden your TikToks begin to change, your Instagram reels begin to change, you get all like these money-making ideas, you can be rich by, just become an influencer, <laughs> good luck, you know, sell a product on Canva, you, you'll make a, a ton of money, is that, that's just my Instagram, okay, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine, because I don't want to be poor, none of us want to be. But poor in spirit is particularly bad. It's, it's, it's difficult enough to have no money. But what if you've got nothing left in your, in your tank? What if you're... What if, if your life is just not moving the way you planned? What if you wake up in the morning and it's just difficult to get your feet out of bed? I, I, I know that's kind of most mornings, but what if it was actually a legitimate thing and not just a thing where you didn't want to go to work? And Jesus is saying, fortunate are the people that have nothing left. Yeah, I know. Oh, it's quiet. It's like crickets in here right now because none of us wants to be in that boat. Oh, okay, Jesus, why are you saying that? Fortunate are the people who have nothing left because theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Jesus says the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God is so big, so vast, so compelling, so amazing that you don't want to have anything of this world. You just want what Jesus has for you. Forget everything that's out there. I mean, you go and you buy a, a boat or you get a new car or you get a new whatever. Uh, yeah, you, hit, you ding a rock or you know, a shopping cart hits the side of it, the car, it stinks now. You know, it's, it's kind of passed away and you're tired of it after a couple of years. But Jesus says, blessed are, fortunate are the people who've got nothing left in their tank because I'm going to fill them with all the good things of the kingdom of God. Everything you need, Jesus, is found in him. And all of our efforts to go all over the place and try everything and, and have every experience and, and try and have everything that money can buy is not satisfying us. I, I'm horrible for this. You, know, you, you buy a new MacBook or you get a new thing or a new, whatever your new thing is. And like, what's your timeline? Mine is about six months before I really want a new one. I remember I, I, like I, I saved up and I struggled to buy my espresso machine. I love my espresso. My espresso machine gets used all day long. It's well used, but I got tired of it very fast. The problem is that I can't afford the one that I really want to buy. Uh, God, I'm never satisfied. But Jesus says, blessed are those who've got nothing left in their tank because the kingdom of God will truly satisfy and giving you everything that you need. All right, so that'll give us kind of an indication of where we're going here in the next few minutes. He continues, he says, blessed are those who mourn. That doesn't sound like fun either. This, this message is going downhill. Let's just move it up to get to the chili because I don't want to mourn. I don't want to grieve. I don't want to be sad. I don't want to be down. Uh, but uh, let me clarify this a little bit. So fortunate are those who mourn. Now, the mourning is connected to the, the poor in spirit, the thing that you had the problem with, the first thing. 
the, it's, it's, it's not grieving over somebody who's died. It's grieving over the fact that there's nothing here that satisfies. I'm in mourning because this world is messed up. I'm, I'm grieving because the world is going in a difficult direction. This, this, this weekend, I mean, this has been going on for months now. Months ago, there is, you know, the attack from the, the Palestinians into Israel. And, and we all read the news and we thought, oh, man, another war, just what this world needs. And then we knew what was going to happen next. We knew there's going to be a big retaliation back into Gaza. And I know like, they did bad things. Well, let's do even more bad things back at them. And so bad things got happened. And then this weekend we see, oh, now Iran is getting involved. And there's missiles and drones and all that. My heart is grieving this weekend because this world stinks. That we live in a world where it's tit for tat. You hit me, I have to hit you back. There was uh, a press conference that the President of the United States did, and he, he said, yeah, we expect there to be a response. Uh, because, you know, the Israelis hit a, an embassy and killed some people. And like, like, why? My heart has been mourning the last few days because our world is messed up. Why do we want to fight each other and kill each other? Why do people strive? Why are there hungry people in our neighborhood? Why are, are people living in tent cities in our communities? And we mourn and we grieve. And Jesus says, fortunate are those who pick up on the fact that this world stinks. Fortunate are those who have figured out that it is really not cool that there's poor people and such fabulously wealthy people. It's not cool that, you know, people are getting left behind. It's not cool that there's racism in the world. It's not cool that there's wars. And Jesus says, fortunate are those who pick up on it because they will be comforted. Are, are you with me this morning? Don't be with the chili. Be with me up here. Are you with me? That there, God, there's got to be something happen in our world. Something has to change because I just don't see that this is going to get any better. How long has Russia and Ukraine been going at it? How long has there been conflict all over Africa? And now we're just waiting. We know that like, like the drums are beating for war all around the world. My heart is mourning because I don't see a solution. And Jesus says to his disciples sitting on the ground, and he says to us that fortunate are you who mourn, who get that this world is not living up to what it promised. You will be comforted. He goes on, he says, blessed or, or fortunate are you who are, are meek, uh, meek or, or, or humble. You're not willing to use, like, like to flex your, your, your influence to get what you need. Blessed are the, the meek because you're going to inherit the earth. You don't, you don't need to scheme and find ways to enrich yourself. God says, I'm going to enrich you with all the blessings and all the goodness of heaven. He goes on, blessed or fortunate are those who are hungry and thirsty for righteousness. <laughs> yeah, hungry and thirsty. We get that right now, but hungry and thirsty for righteousness. We're... we're God, I just, I just have to have what you have. I want that for, for my life because I look around and I see my neighbors and my friends and I see what my life used to be like before Jesus and I just, I just don't want any part of that. So I'm hungry and I'm thirsting for righteousness and Jesus says, well, well, well guess what? They're, they're going to be filled. They will be filled. It's not they might be or hopefully, but they, they will be filled. The kingdom is good enough to fill up those who are brokenhearted. Blessed are those or fortunate are those who are merciful because they will receive mercy. Mercy is, is something that, that is just the nature of the kingdom of God. God showed us mercy. He's calling us to go and do the same. He says blessed are the or fortunate are those who are pure in heart because they will see God. Fortunate or blessed are those who are peacemakers. Not, not peacekeepers where you, you, you try and just, just keep your kids apart. You know, they're not fighting in the back seat, but you're a peacemaker. You are going out and intentionally looking for ways to solve problems and to bring a, a sense of peace to the world. Uh, I mean, a world who, who knows no peace. I want to be a peacemaker because they will be called the sons of God. Because that's kind of God's thing. That's what he's about. Blessed are those, is the, the last one. Blessed are those, or fortunate are those, who are persecuted because of their righteousness. 
because theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Uh, we, I don't think that that's our story too much. In Canada, we got it pretty comfy cozy. We, I mean, people aren't burning down uh, our church. They're not throwing rocks at us as we're you know, going to Bible study and that. Uh, but there's people around the world that their, their countries, the police are not favorable to Christianity. And they have to have underground churches. And they've got nothing. And they're still struggling and going to church, you know, carrying a page of the Bible at the time because they can't can't bear, you, know, you can't have the whole thing, you might get in trouble. Well, those people, you'll be satisfied, you'll be looked after, the kingdom of heaven is yours. And he says, blessed are you when people uh, insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil things about you uh, because of me. But rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Jesus, he's, he's sitting down after the resurrection. He's going through the locked door that we talked about last week. And now he's sitting down for the next 40 days, and he's thinking, how can I impart to these people? As, as I'm going to leave and I'm going to go back to heaven, I'm coming back, but I'm going now. What do these people need to know here on planet Earth before I go? That the kingdom of God. I got to tell them there's a new way of doing things, a new way for them to live, a new way to be that is way better than the way things are now. Jesus continues uh, here in, in verse uh, 13. He says, you are the, the salt of the earth. Ah, oh, can, can I just flex a little on my chili? Okay, I worked really hard on this, okay? My name is not on the chili. I, uh, I'm not trying to curry favor. Courtney said I'm not allowed to use my platform here to brag about my chili. So I'm just going to, you don't know which it is. They're all, they're all nameless. Uh, it, it, it tasted really bad, actually, at the first. Uh, I, you know, put in the ingredients you got. I'm not even going to tell you the ingredients because I don't want you to think, ah, he put this in there. That's, that's Pastor Mike, so I'm going to vote for him. But it did not taste good. You get the chili powder in there. You get the hot powder, the hot peppers. You got the, all these other things. You put it in the pot, and you think it's going to be good, and it, you think the kids are going to think this is a good thing. You think everything, ah, I think this is going to win. No, it's not going to win. It tasted horrible. It was bland. It just tasted like a bunch of beans. And I mean, beans, that, that, that's not a good flavor at all. Ah, bah, bah. Salt. You got to put the salt. And so I got my box of kosher salt. In it. It's not a small little salt shaker. I, I'm too young. I don't have a heart problem. I'll oh, just let's load the salt to it. And I'll bring it to church. And, and you know, God will look after us. God will look after us. You put the salt in your food. And what happens? It makes it pop. It makes it appealing all of a sudden. It's almost time for you know, barbecue season. Well, some of you were barbecuing all winter long. But I, I'm, I'm not as strong as you, but I look forward to that first steak that you can get on the grill and you, you get the salt out. And, and it, it, did you ever see like, those, like the, the chefs on TV, the way they, they put the salt? The, no, it's not salt bay, you know, doing that. They bounce it off his elbow. That's foolishness. But the amount of salt they put on their steak. And you look at McDonald's when they got their fries coming out of the fryer and they have that little contraption that they flip over and it measures out the appropriate amount of salt. And you know it's sinful, all that salt. You know they're, they're, your body is going downhill. But what's going to happen? It's going to be worth it because you're going to go out with a big smile on your face because you just ate some fantastically well-seasoned french fries. There's something special. You add that special thing into your recipe, into your food, and it makes it pop. And I think that's what Jesus is saying to us about the kingdom of heaven. You are the salt of the earth. You are going around and you're revealing to the world that there is a better way and it will be obvious through you because you've been following me, Jesus says. Can you imagine us going around through our day, going to work on Monday and doing our thing, taking your kid to daycare, dropping them off at school, and then God is calling you to be the salt of the earth. God's calling you to be the thing that makes the world better everywhere you go, even when you're grumpy, even when you, know, you don't really want to get out, of bed, get out of bed, but God is calling you to be the salt of the earth, and so everywhere we go, we're sprinkling liberally the seeds of the kingdom of God, seasoning our, our workplaces with joy because we're serving in our workplace. We're not grumbling about our paycheck. I mean, certainly we could grumble, but no, I don't need to grumble because my paycheck is what I'm living for. I'm living for Jesus, and Jesus said that he's got me. If I've got nothing in my tank at the end of the month, Jesus said he would fill me up to overflowing. If I've got nothing left, Jesus said he would be my supply. I don't need to complain at work anymore. I could just be positive. 
I can be full of joy, full of blessing. I see somebody else that's hurting and going through a difficult time. I can be the man of God or the woman of God, the young person of God who can step in and just seize a little bit of kingdom all over them that there is something better in Jesus. We can be healed. Oh, what joy is there to know that we can pray for someone and know that God wants to heal them? I mean, every problem is, is solved in, in Jesus. Every one of our worries, we're invited to bring them to him, to cast all our cares on him. And, and he said he'd, he'd look after us. You're the, the salt of the earth. He's calling us to do something fantastic each and every day, that there is something remarkably different about us that the world can't help but change because of how good it is in my life. That uh, my neighbors see something special going on. That my, my family sees something special going on. You are the salt of the earth. But Jesus says, if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? That doesn't make sense at all. My roommate in, in college, he couldn't eat. Like salt was something he couldn't have in his diet. So we'd go to McDonald's and because... Residence food was horrible. And, and so we go to McDonald's, which we thought was better, but it was really horrible. And, and he would order his fries without salt. Could you, could, could you imagine that? Oh, my goodness. Lord, help us. Have mercy. I ordered them without salt. And, of course, if somebody has fries, you could have one of their fries. But, no, you don't want any of their fries because they taste horrible. They're just like mealy, crunchy potatoes. And I mean, I, I, I'm not from PEI, but... Uh, no, you got to have lots of salt on them. Jesus says that if, if salt loses its saltiness, what sense is it for anymore? It's not good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. God is calling us to be radically different. He's not inviting us to be like everybody else out there with the same problems and the same fears and trying to accumulate more and more and more and never be satisfied. He's calling us to come to him and even though I've got nothing in my tank, to receive from him and to know that everything he's got is all I need for my life. Amen. So this month, we're going to be talking about the kingdom of God, exploring that a little bit further. Well, we're not going to have chili every Sunday. That's just today. But we're going to have a chance to hear from the Lord. We're going to have a chance to let the Lord uh, call us out, speak life to us. I don't know about you, but I do not want to go back to the old way of living. I like it way better on the inside of what Jesus is doing. I see the kingdom coming down, and Lord, I want more and more and more of it. Oh, church, would you stand with me? We're going to wrap up here. We're going to pray together, and I want to... Oh, I want to challenge you to be thinking about this. Right now, yes, but, but all week long, before you come back next week, I want you to be thinking about this. Read these Beatitudes over a couple times every day. Blessed are the, the poor in spirit. So, okay, God, it's, it's good for me to have nothing left. Blessed are those who are mourning, who are uncomfortable with the way the world is. Oh, God, God. Oh, don't let me get so used to this world that I have to stay here forever. God, stir up in my heart. Father, I pray for my friends here today. God, I pray in Jesus' name. Oh, in Jesus' name that we would receive your kingdom. Father, don't let us get too comfortable here and now. But get us ready for what you want to do. There's, there's a couple different kinds of people I want to pray for, and we're going to do that specifically. I, I want to pray for you today. If uh, Maybe you just you don't know Jesus, but this is like the start of something. Come back next week. Read the Beatitudes this week. See what the Lord is saying to you, but this is a chance for you to come close to God. I want to pray for you. Christians, people who love Jesus, I want you to be thinking about how salty you are. <laughs> salty, I know, mixed metaphors. I want you to think, Lord, am I living the way you've called me to live? Am I walking each day, making everywhere that I am a better place just because of what you're doing in me? I want to pray for you. That, that, that God would fan that flame and stir, stir up righteousness and holiness in us. So, Father, I pray for each one. Uh, first of all, I pray for the person on the fence this morning. <laughs> Lord, I pray that you bring them a little closer. 
that God, this week, that they would be into these beatitudes, into these verses, seeing what you're trying to say, that the kingdom of God would find their heart, shine a little bit more light and a little bit more, a little bit more until the whole room of their heart is full of the glory of God. Oh, come in a little bit closer. Father, I want you to be with uh, the, the, the people who know you here and love you and think that your ways are fantastic. I pray that you would grow in us the goodness of God. I pray, Jesus, that we would reflect more and more of Jesus each and every day. Let us become so uncomfortable with this world, so uncomfortable with uh, the things that everybody else is excited about that just aren't going to last. Lord, lead us to be excited about what you're doing in our heart. Father, if there's anybody here today who is feeling poor in their spirit, like they've got nothing left, I pray, Jesus, for them specifically that they would be filled to overflowing, that you pour out your spirit, pour out your love and your joy, and that everything that they need, they'd find today. Oh, Jesus, don't let anybody leave here empty, but let them be full of the goodness of God. I pray your blessing on each one, Jesus. I pray this in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Church, would you say it with me? In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Read those Beatitudes this week. Come back next week expecting a little more from God, okay? Uh, do that with me. We've got lunch. Uh, it's coming. It's not going to be ready right away. But just stay tuned. Hang out. Talk to people. Stick around. Uh, don't feel like you have to go too fast. God bless you, church. <laughs>